Praise the Lord. And we got to talk to you a little bit about Sister uh, Shirley who quoted it, a little bit of it. And we want to talk to you a little bit about God is as good as His Word. You know, the old timers used to, we, my mother had asked me a question about this and kind of got us along these lines. And I was telling her, you know, the old timers, their word was what they were. And you ever heard that saying, well, they're as good as their word. In the old days, if, if men, women gave you their word, that was practically them giving you. you they gave you them because their word was what they were. And God, let me tell you, God is as good as His Word. You can't separate God from His Word. He is everything that God is. His Word is God. And you can't separate that. The attributes that come with God's Word. You know, you say God's Word is faithful. God's Word is true. God's Word is just. It's, it's powerful. All of these traits that we attribute to the Word. Why? is the Word the way it is because that's the way God is. The nature of God's Word is God's nature. And everything that God's Word is, it's of God. It is God. And you know, they used to say that. Well, you know what? His Word is His bond. Well, God's Word is His, is his bond. God speaks His Word to you. You can take it to the bank because God is always going to be as good as His Word. His Word does not fail. Everything around you can fail and fall apart. But let me tell you, that Word of God is stand sure. It's a sure Word. The Bible called it a sure Word of promise. This Word absolutely don't fail. When all the excitement fails, the Word stands sure. When everything else around you is failing and you, you can't put no trust in it, but that Word, it stands like an iron pillar, unmovable, unchangeable. You know, things change in this modern day. You look at America today, it's not the same America of 50 years ago. Things change. People change. But the Word of God, it does not change. It don't change to suit generations. It don't change to suit people. It don't change with popular opinion. It remains the same. What it says is what it means. The Word of God absolutely is unmovable. Praise the Lord. Look here in the book of St. John. We just want to read the first two verses here. St. John chapter 1 and verses 1 and 2. John begins to say, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Father, I thank you, God, for the reading of your Word, for the uh, unction of the Holy Ghost, this great Spirit, God, that's been in this place, God, this whole night tonight, Lord. Jesus, we ask Him, God, for the power of and divine revelation and inspiration of the Holy Ghost, the anointing, God, to speak only what would be thus saith the Lord. God, tonight, Jesus, anoint our lips, anoint our spirit, God, with your word. Lord, hide us behind the cross. Cover us in your blood, Jesus. Lord, hide your word in our hearts that we'd not sin against you tonight. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nathers, amen. And John said here, in the very, or in the beginning, or the very beginning, was the Word. He said, well, why didn't he say it was God? It goes back to what we said, you cannot separate God from His Word. Where it says Word, it might as well say God. Because you cannot separate them. God, He stands by His Word. His Word is His bond. What He speaks comes to pass. God spoke in the very beginning in Genesis and said, let there be, and there was. God said, let there be a, uh, let the waters divide from the land, 
And that word caused the waters to divide. You know what? That water has been divided for all these years. The waves come in, but they only come so far. Because God said back all them years ago, let the waters gather from the land. God said, let there be lights in the firmament, or the heavens, the stars, and the moon. And you know what that word did? That word created. That word, he said, let there be animals in the, that swim in the seas. And God, that word, went in there and it created sharks and whales and bluegills and it created all the manner of uh, water living creatures. He said, let there be the fowls of the air. And that word created every bird. It created, he said, let there be animals on the, on the land. And, and every animal, that word created it. He spoke the word and created Adam, formed him from the dust of the ground. See, that word is a creator. It creates. Well, that's the nature of God. God is a creator. God creates out of nothing. His Word causes things to come out of nothing. Only God and only His Word can take a handful of nothing and speak and it becomes something. Nobody without the Holy Ghost can do that. Mohammed never did that. Jesus did. Allah Never did that. Jesus did. God did. Elohim. Come on. Oh, you know, they don't call him that in the Muslim beliefs. He's Allah. We just listened to that song, El Shaddai. El Shaddai did. He spoke. And everything was created. His word created everything. He said here, he said, in the beginning, from the very beginning, was the Word. And the Word was with God. In other words, that Word was in God's mouth and God spoke that Word. It was with Him. And He said, and the Word was God, inseparable. You cannot separate God. From his word. What I, in other words, what I speak, I am what I speak. You cannot separate, you know, if you go out there and you start speaking, people know what kind of person you are by your speech. Somewhere, what you are, your mouth's going to tell it, whether you want it to or not. Somewhere, and that's the way, why? Because you are what you speak. And God, He is what His Word spoke. His Word can only be what He spoke it to be. He said, so Him and His Word is the same. Inseparable. The same was in the beginning with God. His Word was there from the beginning to create. Now I begin to look at this and I said, God, what is the nature of Your Word? And God began to take me. I began to look through different places. And I want you to look over here in Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews, or excuse me, not chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 1. I'm so used to preaching out of 11. Hebrews chapter 1. And verse 1. God, who at sundry times... And in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. Hath in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir to all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word, of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. And you notice there, 
mean, there's a lot we can get into in these couple of verses. He said, verse 3 said, Who being in the brightness of His glory and the express image of His person. In other words, if you want to see God, look at Jesus. He was the express image. He was the image of the invisible God. You could not look upon God. You know, that's why a lot of folks, hear a lot of folks today say, well, you can't see Jesus and live today. They don't know their Bible. They're mixed up. You can't behold God. I hear a lot of folks, well, you can't see Jesus. You know, people today can't see Jesus. You know, you, they, and then they go to that scripture where he says no man could look upon God and live. And they have no understanding. No. You could not in the old covenant look upon the invisible God and live. His glory was too great. Moses could only see the hinder parts of God, but he could not see the face of the invisible God. But in these last days, when Jesus came, he became the image, the express image of the invisible God that when you can look in the face of Jesus and live and not die. So no, you couldn't look upon God in the form He was before Jesus. But after Jesus come, if that was the case, Sister Thelma, then nobody that Jesus preached to was able to look at Him. But they all seen Him. They seen Him after He was resurrected. And they lived and not died. Why? Because He was the express image of His person. What person? God, the invisible before and upholding all things by the word of his power in other words his word was so powerful to the surely when God said let this be all these thousands and thousands of years sister Thelma that word has stood there and kept the world spinning they say, well, it's the axis. That's right. We call it the axis that keeps the world spinning. But in reality, it's the word of God that was spoken from the beginning and caused the world to spin. That same word as his oldest time itself but it's still just as powerful because the world, the sun still rises and sets because God's word upholds the world by the word of his power. His word is so powerful that the waves come in and they remember that thousands of years ago God said you come no farther and they don't go any further because they're held back by the word of his power. That word is so powerful that it tells the moon when to make its cycle. And the moon obeys God's word. It has for thousands and thousands of years the solar system. My God, how could the solar system work so perfectly? I mean, you know, grade school science teach you about the solar system. Every planet has its own rotation. And just a little bit off here or a little bit off there could throw it out of his rotation and mess everything up. But how is it that Saturn stays in its rotation and never gets out? Not one time. Earth stays in its rotation and while it's rotating spinning and doing this and moving around the sun the moon is doing this around it perfectly aligned